Once again, because Windows 7 ends its support or has ended its support, if you're watching this later than 14 January 2020, maybe you're still debating whether you should upgrade to Windows 10 or not. Allegedly, still for free. So in this video, I'm going to do a 180 switcheroo and give you 11 reasons why you should consider upgrading to Windows 10 for free from Windows 7, 8 or 8.1. Let's take it out. Hey name tags and welcome this is Ash from Hit My Tech. If you're new here on this channel, I want to help you develop a better relationship with technology. So consider subscribing, click the bell icon to go from the beat to techie. And please use my Amazon affiliate links in the description below to help out the channel with no extra cost to you. Thanks a million. In the last video, we did 11 reasons why you shouldn't upgrade to Windows 10. So what's the deal here? Well, the fact is that for some people, Windows 10 will be the better choice, not because they want to, but because they have to, and also because they want to, because they probably don't know any better, but they probably do. So I'm going to try to parallel some of the same reasons of the last video and see if we can make some sort of sense. Also, the Windows 10 upgrade is with respect to both upgrading from Windows 7 and switching to another OS like Linux. Number one, the most obvious reason, of course, is because Windows 7 mainstream support is ending. So security is a concern if you stick with an old Windows version. I did a video on what Windows 7 end of support actually means, so go watch it up there. Number two, because it's Windows. I mean, sure, it's not Windows 7. The interface, layout, look, feel, applications are all different, but they're not massively different. It's still Windows, which at the core of it is still built upon its predecessors. So there is a level of familiarity, albeit a slight learning curve as to where certain folders and applications are located. But beyond the improved architecture, it's still Windows. That operating system, which some people have grown up with since its inception, pre-Windows 1.0, i.e. the DOS era. So that's 25 years of a familiar OS. It's much easier to learn to navigate around Windows 10 from Windows 7 than it will be to switch platforms like Linux or Mac OS. Number three. Windows 10 is a free upgrade still. Yes, we all know that officially the free upgrade period ended in July 2016, but for some obscure reason, or oh, not so obscure, Microsoft is still allowing a free upgrade to Windows 10 as long as you have a valid Windows 7, 8 or 8.1 activated license. Yes, you are paying indirectly, but the fact remains that you don't have to pay the actual license fee at the moment if you can still upgrade. Number four, telemetry and privacy concerns are not unique to Microsoft. Google, Apple, Facebook, WhatsApp, and the others have increasing dodgy practices at a time when public trust regarding government surveillance is also at an all-time low. Still, under the guise of national security and global connectivity, some of that data that is collected does indeed help to further the incredibly alarming fast advancing tech at an unprecedented rate never seen before. Cloud services are really awesome and so is the synchronized experience across all your connected devices from anywhere in the world. That is amazing stuff. Still, this is not something unique to Microsoft and albeit their high price tag, Microsoft Azure could be giving Amazon Web Services a run for the top spot in public cloud space. Just saying that if you want to make an omelet, you gotta crack that egg. The problem is the potential misuse of that data and the unclear practices that are carried out by companies and government alike. I'm very far from being an engineer working for those conglomerates and I cannot imagine how you would be able to strike the right balance between privacy and security. I'm sure some of you are going to be schooling me down in the comments below. Go for it. Still, you can't put all that blame on Microsoft alone. There is also individual responsibility, such as the understanding that as long as you are connected and you insist on sharing every shot of that purple drink that you consume, you can be easily traced by those who know where to look. So delete your social media now. Number five, drivers just work. 
I know I said that certain drivers may not work as they did on Windows 7 in the last video, but chances are you won't even have to look for, download and install a driver for it to work on Windows 10. Since Windows has such a huge share of the market, manufacturers are more likely to write Windows 10 compatible drivers than for other OS like Linux. I think the only driver I have been downloading and installing manually are graphics cards drivers because the Windows generic ones just won't do. I remember sometimes having to spend hours trying to look for weird third-party drivers on Windows 7, which at times was still a hit or a miss. Number six, gaming. As far as PC gaming is concerned, Windows is still king. Games and drivers just work and patches are quickly fixed, although Linux has made a lot of improvement with Steam Play, Proton, Lutris and Wine, we are still a long way to give Windows a run for the money if you are serious about PC gaming. Number 7. New Hardware Talking about gaming, how about finally a reason to upgrade your 10 year old PC with a brand new OS and better gaming parts. 2019 was a great year for the PC community, especially with Ryzen and Windows 10 drivers, we're unable to squeeze those extra FPS at much higher resolution than ever before, because drivers. Number eight, Mac OS. Despite Apple's terrible practices, they know how to run a tight ship and keep their customers returning, no matter how frustrating it is because their whole eco structure is really well supported since they control both hardware and software, so very well optimized. If you speak to most Apple users, at least in my experience, they say things like Apple products are user friendly and they just work. Their words, not mine. The problem is that this exclusive club comes at a really high price, which is not financially viable for many people, including yours truly. Number nine, Linux. So the only other choice would be Linux, but despite all the benefits that Linux brings to the table, the downside is that it can be intimidating for many people who still think that Linux requires use of the CLI and is exclusively for geeks. They're wrong, but they're also partially right. Linux can be troublesome for the following types of people. For example, if when you ask what version of Windows are you using, you say things like, oh, I don't know, it's a Dell, or HP and you don't have a big pocket, then Windows 10 it is for you. You want another one? In your downloads folder, there are 10 copies or more of the same file that you keep clicking on to download. Okay, last one. Every possible file and folder is saved exclusively on your desktop. So much so, you can't even see the wallpaper anymore. If you have any more, go to town in the comments below. Number 10, Chrome OS. And if you were just about to mention Chrome OS for an all online computing experience only, have you seen Chromebook prices lately? They are ridiculously high. For the same price, you can get a brand new, fully functional, decent Windows laptop. What gives? As for installing Chrome OS on a computer, I'm not sure. Let me know how is that experience. Can you install Chrome OS on any type of hardware, old or new? We need a video on this channel here soon, guys. So collab anyone, hit me up. And number 11, because you need to, not because you want to. Maybe you're part of a study project who only use Windows 10, maybe you're working in a Windows environment only, or maybe all your friends and family use Windows exclusively, so you are in your comfort zone and who can blame you? This is a last minute addition after I already recorded the video. This is a comment from Mark Dalby. I cannot speak for power users, I am far from a power user and can only speak for myself. I dabbled in Linux in the early 2000s and it sucked and that was over quickly. I recently used Linux and though there are still problems, it has greatly improved. One of the problems is there is no small business accounting software for Linux, nada. Every small business uses some sort of accounting program. If you think you can use Genu Cash, you are kidding yourself. Businesses like to stay on the same platform for everybody in the business. Until Linux comes up with an accounting system that a business will use, it will never be on a job site. Adobe doesn't run on Linux. Photoshop has about 95% of the photo editing market and is an Adobe product. Anybody that thinks GIMP is just as good as Photoshop has never used both. Some things Linux is good for and some things it is not. As for forced updates, if I remember, people weren't upgrading their computers, so Microsoft forced them. 
WannaCry did not hit the United States very hard. It hit hard in countries that still use XP a lot and don't get updates. I believe it also hit companies that put off updates. Linux has about 3% of the market. If hackers spent anywhere as much time on Linux as Microsoft, Linux would have more security issues. Linux may be inherently more secure than Microsoft, but hackers are not really trying to find vulnerabilities. The privacy ship sailed long ago. I was in military security, they can collect information, but somebody has to process it. In the 80s, we could collect about 10 times more information that we could process. Somebody has to care. Nobody cares about what dodgy sites you visit. Privacy is good in theory, but in the real world, it probably doesn't matter. If you know they're doing it, it is not spying. Spying by its very nature is secret. Since you know Microsoft is doing it, it is not spying, more like monitoring. I probably will not respond to this comment because it pretty much sums up the topic of what we're discussing, i.e. upgrading to Windows 10 vis-a-vis -vis using Linux. But in the future, we will definitely be doing videos about transitioning onto Linux and all the potential problems that may come with it. However, I'm going to leave you the pleasure of responding to this one and maybe if it's interesting enough, we'll do a follow-up video based on that. So those were my 11 points as to why you should consider upgrading to Windows 10. If you have other reasons that I've missed, do your thing in the comments below. Despite all the negativity surrounding Windows 10, my experience with Windows 10 so far has been positive compared to Windows 7. Objectively, Windows 10 is a better architecture than Windows 7, no doubt. I upgraded quite late to Windows 10 because of all the early issues, but I have to say that in my experience, it is far more stable and safe than it was on Windows 7. Maybe I've been lucky or maybe I just do better administration nowadays as a then user. Time will tell. Having said that, you guys should know my position by now. I prefer Linux and I am here to help you transition but at the same time, not unlike some of you, I have to continue to use Windows 10 for certain specific tasks because of my situation. So check out this video up here and hop onto this one if you want to learn how to use Linux as a beginner. Don't forget to subscribe and click the bell icon and use my Amazon affiliate links in the description below. And I will see you in the next one. Until next time, peace out.